One thing we can do is we can take uh, equations and we can solve different equations in different ways. So what I mean by an equation, first of all, is anything that has things on the left side and on the right side, it's got an equal sign in the middle. That's an equation. Now, what do I mean by simultaneous? That's when we have two or more different equations going on at the same time, and we're trying to find an answer that solves everything. Now, in order to make this make more sense, maybe I should give you an example. So uh, let's do one here. So let's just say I have maybe x plus 2y equals 9, and then maybe I have x minus y equals 3. So see, now I have two different equations that I'm trying to make this work. But just to explain a little bit about solving equations, uh, maybe I can hide this here. So maybe I can just show you a little bit. So what if, what if I only see x plus 2y equals 9? And the question might be, find x. Now hopefully you see that I could get x by itself. I could say that x then equals, well, I could say I get rid of this by moving it over. So I could say 9 minus 2y. Say, great, x is 9 minus 2y. But do you see that I can't find a real value for x unless I know y? I could also have done the same. I could have said, well, what does y equal? I could have taken this same equation here, and first of all, I could uh, you know, get the 9 on its own, so I can say 9 minus x. And then after that, I could divide everything by 2. I'm just uh, skipping a few steps here, but this is really what it would look like. Just to show you that if I want to get y by itself, y depends on x as well. I need to know x in order to know y. So do you see that with one equation, but with two different letters that I don't know, I can't really solve this. Well, I can't solve it definitely. See, because there's an infinite number of answers. I could say that y is 0. If I made y 0, it turns out that x would have to be 9. But if I make y 1, for example, then x would have to be 7. And I can make y 2, for example, and then y, uh, x would have to be, let's see, 5. In other words, it really depends. So with one equation only, but with two unknown values, I can't really solve it. But if I have a second equation, see, then with two equations and with two unknowns, I can do it. In other words, there should hopefully exist an x and a y value that solve this one, this equation here, that make this true, and that same x and the same y value make this equation true. That's the idea behind it. That's the idea behind uh, simultaneous equations. It means that you have to deal with them both at the same time. So let's first of all talk about uh, how to solve them in general. There's two main ways of doing it uh, that a lot of teachers like to teach you. I mean, you can do it lots of other ways. You could graph both of these equations. If you can make them both, you know, y equals blah, 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 something like that. You could graph them and find where the two equations meet. That's one way of doing it. But uh, in this case, I'm going to show you just numerically how to do it. So I've got one equation and one equation. I want to put them together, make them the same. So one way to do it is called substitution. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you another way that's called elimination. Okay, so there's going to be substitution and elimination. So let's talk about substitution. The main way to do it is, uh, we're going to give you little steps here. So one, you pick an equation. Oops, I better make sure I make my writing clear here. Pick an equation. You can pick any of them. You can pick the first one or the second one. I'll say, and um, get in terms of, uh, wait, maybe I should say, no, oops. I should say, um, maybe solve for one variable. Like what I was just showing you before. So in other words, get it with, you know, maybe x equals something. So solve for one variable. I'm just going to write down the steps, then I'm going to show you what I do here. So then you substitute that into the other equation. I mean, there's a million ways of explaining this, I think, but this is how I kind of see it happening. You substitute it into the other equation and then solve for one, very, uh, solve for one unknown and then solve for the other. This may make no sense right now, so let me just show you with this example here. So this was my example here. I want to start with x plus 2y equals 9, and I have x minus y equals 3. Now I can pick whichever equation I want. So let's say I just picked um, maybe the 
the top equation. Maybe I start with this equation one here, so to speak, the top one, and I want to get x by itself. Let's just concentrate on this one equation right here. I want to take this one and get x by itself. Yeah, that would be step one. Yeah, I'm going to pick an equation, the top one, and I'm going to solve for one variable. So I'm going to get x on its own. And to get x on its own, I need to move the 2y. The 2y is another term, so it can just be subtracted away or added. But because this is a plus, the only thing that gets rid of a plus is a minus. So that means I'm going to make it minus 2y on the right side. So I'm going to have x equals 9 minus 2y. That's my first equation when I solve for one variable. Do you see how I got x by itself? Unfortunately, I don't have a, an actual value for x because it depends on y. That's why we use what's called substitution. So we're going to substitute this into the other equation. So because I decided to start with the first equation, that means I'm going to take my answer now and put it into the other equation. That means everywhere in this equation, this second equation, everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with what I just said x equals. I said x is the same thing as y minus 2y. So in this equation here, anywhere I saw an x, I'm going to replace it with 9 minus 2y. That means looking at this second equation then, I'm going to rewrite it. But instead of x, I'm going to put in 9 minus 2y. That's the x value. And then the equation says to do minus y, so I do that, minus y equals 3. Do you see how now I have one equation with only one unknowns? That's what I'm looking at. So I suppose I shouldn't pluralize only one unknown, not two of them. So in this case then, let's uh, maybe combine like terms. I want to put these two together. So 9, let's see, minus 2y minus 1y, or minus 2 minus 1 is going to be minus 3. So that means 9 minus 3y equals 3. Now I want to get rid of the 9. Maybe I shove it over to the right-hand side here. This is another term, so I can subtract. That means I'm going to say 9, uh, sorry, minus 3y equals 3 minus 9. Then I can say, I'll just go on to the right here so we can see everything. So that means minus 3y equals, well, what's 3 minus 9? That's uh, minus 6. I want to get y by itself. So that means I have minus 6, and to get rid of a minus 3 that's glued in front of the y. In other words, it's multiplying it. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. I'm going to divide both sides by minus 3. That gets rid of the minus 3 on the left side, puts it on the right. A minus divided by a minus becomes a plus. So I have, in the end, y equals 6 divided by 3, which is 2. So I've got one answer. I know for sure now that y has to be 2. So I've solved for one unknown. But I need to solve for the other. I need to find out what x is. I've got a number of equations that I could use. I could use the first one, the second one, or I could even use my rewritten version of the first one. That's what I often like to do. Do you notice I already got an equation for x? I said x equals 9 minus 2y, which means as long as we knew what y was, we could know what x is. Well, look, we know what y is. y is 2. So this is how we solve for the other variable. Pick any equation. I may as well pick the one here that's the most well, the easiest, no sense of reinventing the wheel here. So let me just say, so x equals 9 minus 2y, but y is 2. We just found that. So because of that, it's a little bit like, you know, being a detective. You try to find out what the different letters are. You try to find out, you know, what's the answer, so to speak. So in this case, we found a clue. We found one clue that y was 2. Because we know y is 2, that means we can say that, well, x, since it's 9 minus 2y, x is going to be 9 minus 2 times 2. Remember your order of operations, you multiply first. So that means x equals 9 minus, well, 2 times 2 is 4. So you can conclude then that x equals 9 minus 4, which is 5. Maybe I'll put it up here just to make it nice and easy. So we have a pair of values. We have x equals 5 and y equals 2. Now how do you know we did it right? We could always plug it in here. Does x equals 5 and y equals 2 work? If I make this 5 here, 5 plus 2 times 2, that's going to be 4. 5 plus 4 is 9. So that works. How about the second one? If I make x equal to 5 here, 5 minus 2 does equal to 3. So do you see how my solution here, x equals 5 and y equals 2, works for the first one and the second one? It has to solve both if it's a simultaneous equation. That's what simultaneous means at the same time.